The XRP ledger has a built-in decentralized exchange, including all kinds of features like peer-to-peer -peer credit, sophisticated multi-hop payment features, and so on. And that leaves the XRP ledger uniquely positioned to leapfrog other DEXs by offering a unique automated market maker implementation. The probably the most unique feature is it allows those who provide liquidity for automated market makers to take a large share of the profits that would normally go to arbitrageurs. Can't really talk about the secret sauce just yet. Uh, we're not going to be able to get there alone. Um, Ripple, can't, Ripple can't do this by itself. Uh, we're working with the broader XRP Ledger community to expand the DeFi ecosystem with this automated market maker implementation. If you look at the first NFT projects that got real growth, their secret was a great user experience. Uh, the XRP Ledger today does not have any support for automated market making. And I think all major DEXs have shown that that, that, that is a, a must have. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Zen Lounge. I know you guys are feeling really good after my previous video teaching you guys about the liquidity pools. We've been soaking up all the rewards from the Pulsera ecosystem through their automated market makers and liquidity pools. And what's coming right around the corner is automated market makers, or we could call them automatic automatic money makers are coming to the XRP ledger. We have a code red alert today. We officially have reached 26 yes votes on the AMMs coming to the XRP ledger, 26. So you can see right here, the threshold is 28. However, we actually need to hit plus 80%. So once we get 29 votes, the countdown begins. In two weeks, the XRP ledger will then be able to automatically upgrade the software with the automated market making functionality uh, live. One of the projects that is set to go live and have first movers advantage who've been ready for months now is Sologenic. Sologenic has explained XLS30, new feature, what it means for the expert RP ledger. Many times they're ready. Also, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the pros and cons, what you need to be aware of entering uh, your XRP into liquidity pools in this video. So I put together an actual document to teach you guys about different scenarios entering XRP Ledger. First, I'm going to play this clip from David Schwartz so you guys could hear his metaphor for what it is when you're entering these dual asset trading pools. So as most of you probably know, an AMM has a pile of two assets and it makes markets between those two assets, but it's also implementing a trading, um, a yield. So if you were an Apple buyer and seller and the prices of apples were different around the world, you could go around the world buying and selling apples and make a profit. And what you would have is you'd have a pile of apples and a pile of currency, whatever currency you like, euros or dollars, and you would buy apples and your pile of apples would go up and your pile of currency would go down. And you would do that when the price was low. And then you would sell apples, right, when the price of apples was comparatively higher. And if you do that, eventually your pile of, of money will get bigger. And that is essentially what the AMM tries to do. It implements a trading strategy to harvest volatility on behalf of the liquidity providers who loan it assets. I'm much more personally excited about that than I am about the fact that it provides liquidity, but it does also provide liquidity. It does also make markets. I hope you enjoyed that clip from David Schwartz. As you see on the right-hand side of my screen, there's going to be options that you basically put your tokens into. Uh, XRP, USD, Solo USD. Uh, different options, but you need two tokens to enter a liquidity pool. And I'm going to show you guys some scenarios in this video. Uh, so what you need to be aware of is you need to understand how AMMs work. So this is in a scenario with XRP priced at 50 cents and USD priced at $1 if we were to enter the XRP and USD pool. So if you're very, very bullish on XRP's price appreciating, you might want to think twice. You might actually do better off uh, just holding XRP. This is where the phrase impermanent loss comes in because impermanently you could experience, uh, let me just explain because the word is kind of more scary than it, than it sounds. So let's say I have $1,000 and XRP is priced at 50 cents. So let's say one user, user number one holds 2000 XRP, which equals 1000 USD. That's all he does. He holds his 2000 XRP, which equals 1000 USD. And another person, user number two, enters a liquidity pool with 1000 USD. 
So what this user is doing is he's going to have 1,000 XRP in this pool and 500 USD to start. So he has 1,000 XRP. User two has 1,000 XRP, $500 USD split into a pool. User one is just holding 2,000 XRP. In this scenario, XRP pumps up to $1. So let's say XRP pumps to $1, increasing the value of XRP by 100%. User one will now, now with 2,000 XRP, turn 1,000 USD into 2,000. So user one basically turned $1,000 into 2,000. User two, because 50% of his value was in USD, experienced uh, 1.5X, which equals 1,500 USD. And user two now has 750 XRP, and $750 USD when XRP goes to $1. So he actually has less XRP than when he entered the pool, if we were to pull out. So he actually has less USD in the pool. He has less XRP than when he entered, but he has more USD. And it's going to constantly fluctuate depending on the rise in price. Now, what is interesting about this XRPL um AMM is you're constantly going to be earning commissions. There's a constant auction mechanism that's happening while your money's in the pool. So you're going to be earning commissions as your assets fluctuate. So if you hold long term, uh, this is where the term impermanent comes in. Temporarily, you had less XRP than when you started, but through the commissions, in theory, you could basically make the XRP back you're actually earning APR, real sustainable yield, as you're in that pool. Does that make sense? So if you hold in the long term, uh, things are supposed to balance out. But if you if XRP were to pump to like a ridiculously high number, obviously the user who just held XRP and didn't split his value 50-50 with USD would experience more gains. So when you're in XRP USD, the way I look at it is that's typically when I'm hedging against potential dumps. Because let me show you scenario number two. So scenario number two is let's say XRP starts at $1 and USD is always at $1, right? So user one holds 1,000 XRP to get started, which is 1,000 USD. And user two has 1,000 USD and he starts with 500 XRP, 500 USD. Now let's say XRP dumps to 50 cents, XRP dumps. User one who just held the XRP, the 1000 XRP, now that 1000 XRP is worth 500 bucks. So that person went from $1,000 to 500 bucks because he's totally 100% only exposed to XRP. User two who entered the liquidity pool uh, who started with 500 XRP, 500 USD, now he has actually... Um, $750. So he didn't experience as much of a loss. He started with 1000 Now he's at 750 But he actually has more XRP. So user two who entered the liquidity pool, who started with 500 XRP, now has 750 XRP. And now he has 375 USD. Now think about the metaphor that David Schwartz has talked to you about, the apples and currency. So user two now holds more XRP than USD when he started. See the difference? So um, XRP and solo, if you enter that pool after a big pump, it's a good hedge to hedge from those potential dumps. USD is always stable. Uh, XRP is a cryptocurrency that's very volatile. This helps you hedge against that volatility being in USD. Now you're just seeing it work in two different ways. That's why when you get into DeFi, you have to come up with your own strategy and use these tools with your own um, with your own discernment. Because if XRP pumps hundreds and hundreds percent and you're half hedged in USD, you're not going to experience the same amount of pump as someone who's not. That's just how it is. Uh, the last scenario is this is the worst scenario that people get wrecked the most is remember these blockchains are permissionless. So these blockchains, anybody could issue a token. 
uh, very actually simple to issue a token. So usually when people are new to these types of protocols, there's a bunch of scams and a bunch of people are going to be asking for your liquidity and they will basically, so there's other scenarios. We did two scenarios today talking about uh, a crypto like XRP paired with the USD. There's going to be more options that are a lot more volatile when you basically have two altcoins. One of the pools I'm personally, me as a personal investor looking it forward to is uh, the XRP solo pool. I think that is going to be a great opportunity because both those assets I'm a pretty big fan of and they both uh, are doing some major things on the XRP ledger. And both of those projects have the potential to rise with this news. So it's not like I'll be half hedged in USD. Both those assets could go up. That could be comfortable in that pool. Uh, so that's really important. Important. But another thing that's important is that when shit coins start launching on these blockchains, they're going to ask you to pair your XRP or solo with a shit coin. And these shit coins, the team could just abandon the project or stop working on the project. And that could go to zero, draining your blue chip. So be very careful of what you pull. Don't just pull your XRP or, or Solo or Corium or these really powerful assets with a junk coin. Because if that junk coin goes to zero, you are going to basically get your liquidity drained and you'll lose a lot of your uh, blue chip assets. So that's basically the most important thing to be aware of. Um if you enter a pool that you are happy owning either of those two in the pool, then you're cozy. They're going to fluctuate, but you're going to be earning trading fees, earning commissions. And with the with Pulsera, you actually earn a boost of incentives that help you know, even out any types of fluctu fluctuation uh, of tokens, aka impermanent loss. So those incentives make up for the impermanent loss. So that makes sense. So hopefully uh, this helped you guys understand, cross-reference this information to uh, other assets. But this is uh, XRP USD scenario one and two. Let me know if you have any questions on these. Hopefully this paints a good picture so you understand. Because a lot of people enter a liquidity pool and be like, Zen, how come I have less XRP than what I started for? Uh, it's more than likely because you have more of the other asset uh, at that time. So everybody, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more content from David Schwartz and peace. Object, which is the AMM. I am unreasonably excited about this for largely personal reasons. I've spent a lot of time studying things like trading strategies and Forex markets. And this is near and dear to my heart. Um, I also learned something that I didn't know, which is um, as I watched automated market makers develop on other chains, I sort of thought that automated market makers were better than order books. That like we implemented order books on the XRP ledger because it's sort of like the obvious thing. And then there's this really cool thing called an, called an automated market maker that most other like DeFi platforms are using, most other DEXs are using. And I learned as I looked into it that they're very complementary. They are not one or the other. One is not better than the other. They each have their own advantages and disadvantages. And the two of them together is way better than anything that you could get from having either one independently. And XLS30 is not just another AMM implementation. This was not the XRP ledger playing catch up. We were caught up with an order book. Um, this is a true innovation. The XRP ledger is a trusted and leading enabler of DeFi because the underlying architecture of the ledger combined with the protocol native design of the decentralized exchange and soon the AMM will address most of the pain points faced in the decentralized liquidity landscape today. The XRPL's DEX was launched in 2012, the first DEX in the world, tokenization of any asset, the ability to trade and move these tokens anywhere in the world in just seconds, and open globally competitive liquidity. Now, Adding AMM to that, AMM, first and foremost, as I think about it, most people think of an AMM, first and foremost, as providing liquidity. I think of it, first and foremost, as a trading engine. RippleX is focused on differentiating the world's first DEX through automated market making. The AMM specification is now on DevNet for testing, and it'll be available to vote on mainnet, I think, just in a, in a couple of days. 
But ultimately, I see the AMM as a trading engine. It executes a trading strategy on behalf of the those people who sort of provide the liquidity. So as most of you probably know, an AMM has a pile of two assets, and it makes markets between those two assets. But it's also implementing a trading, um, a yield. So if you were an Apple buyer and seller and the prices of apples were different around the world, you could go around the world buying and selling apples and make a profit. And what you would have is you'd have a pile of apples and a pile of currency, whatever currency you like, euros or dollars, and you would buy apples and your pile of apples would go up and your pile of currency would go down. And you would do that when the price was low. And then you would sell apples, right, when the price of apples was comparatively higher. And if you do that, eventually your pile of, of money will get bigger. And that is essentially what the AMM tries to do. It implements a trading strategy to harvest volatility on behalf of the liquidity providers who loan it assets. I'm much more personally excited about that than I am about the fact that it provides liquidity, but it does also provide liquidity. It does also make markets. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, it, but we normally think of arbitrage as arbitrage over, over space, right? Like you go to this market and you buy, and you go to that market and you sell, and you go to this market and you buy. This is arbitrage over time, but it turns out arbitrage works over time too. Um, it's, it, the only problem is you don't know the price ahead of time, right? You can't predict, but it turns out you don't, you don't need to. So an exciting development also is orchestra finance, independent of Ripple, which is going to be the first interface layer for the AMM. So the... It provides benefits for all of the different stakeholders, the liquidity providers, the people who sort of take their assets and give them to the DEX, arbitragers, traders, and developers. Developers, of course, benefit from the liquidity that the automated market makers provide. Their tokens are more liquid, and so users can benefit from access to that liquidity. Liquidity providers want to maximize the returns that they get from the various different things that the automated market maker does to uh, make a profit. XLS30 enables them to vote for trading fees. And probably the biggest single innovation is the continuous auction mechanism that reduces impermanent loss, and it also increases the efficiency of the volatility harvesting. What this does is this takes some of the profit that would normally be made by the arbitragers and gives it to the liquidity providers. The arbitragers are trying to make profit from sort of in asymmetric information. They have access to the prices off the ledger, and the AMM does not. The auction mechanism increases the probability of success to capture mispricing profits. And it enables the automated market maker's trading strategy to capture very small changes in price. If you think about it, big movements in price have a larger opportunity for profit simply because the price change is bigger. Like if you're buying and selling a stock and it moves a lot, you can make more money. But it doesn't do that very often. Small movements occur much more often. And in aggregate, if you sum them all up, it's a greater opportunity than the large movements. But in order to catch the small movements, the system has to be very efficient. If there's a high fee, a small change in price won't be captured because people wait until the price difference exceeds the fee. If the transactions are slow and there's a small movement, you don't try to capitalize on that because the price might move against you before your trade can execute. The, XRPLs, the XRP ledger's features make it easy to capture those smaller price movements. And of course, integration. The AMM is going to be integrated in the DEX. <laughs>